Hello, my name is Shane Connolly. Today I want to talk about using branches, what to grow as a grower, and secondly, techniques for larger arrangements that are also sustainable, i.e. foam free. As we know, sustainability isn't just about foam, it's also about what you put into the arrangement, and that's where relationships with good growers or growing things yourself is so important. So I'm gonna start off with the technique this is a large basket, which I just happen to have around in lockdown. You could use an urn, you could use a big stone bird bath, anything that's going to give you a structure. In it, I've got a bucket, plastic, but it's gonna be reused. And in that, I have put a grid work of branches, which I've tied together. You can see I've tied them to the handles and I've tied them to each other, just as a starting point. So that goes in there. I also like to give it a bit of stability. I usually use plants. Anything will do. These are two old Calaboris orientalis that I just haven't yet planted, but they give it enough stability and cover the bottom of the plastic so that that's a good place to start. Water. When you're working with water as opposed to foam, not to fill right to the very top because when you put branches and things in they can over make the water overflow very easily branches I've got this beautiful May flower it's called Hawthorn Cretaceous if you want to be Latin about it shapely beautiful pieces so that when I've got an arrangement to start off I put one piece in, held in place by this nice grid work of tweaks, and already it gives it shape. Another piece I can put in using my grid work of tweaks, right there. And it's whole, the more I put in, the more the branches entwine together like a nest on them. And I try to look at each piece and see which way it falls most beautifully. So that seems to be beautiful that way, so in it goes. Constance Spry used to say that she never thought in advance what shape she wanted. She absolutely let the foliage and the flowers decide the shape they should be. Again, I'm thinking that arrangements shouldn't really have a front and a back even though they usually do. It's very nice if you feel something's going on at the back. It gives it a completely different feeling. Oh, this beautiful piece. The joy of arranging into water is that you're absolutely sure everything is getting hydrated, and also it gives you this chance to be looser with your style of arrangement, which I really like. So this is a great thing to grow or to forage. Cretaceous, quickthorn, The other thing, which I've cut from the garden, are these beautiful viburnum opulus branches. Again, this is a shrub. You plant and forget about it. It just gets better and better every year, and you do need to prune it. So this is the pruning. I prune it when it's in flower. And don't, don't be afraid of something. This is not particularly doing what I want. I can absolutely Cut it off, edit. Don't be afraid to edit. This is a very beautiful piece. And again, which is its most beautiful angle? I think it's that one. This is the joy of branches and foliage. It makes you look at your ingredients because there's a right way and a wrong way. It's not just a flower head staring at you. And I feel that this feels very secure. I mean, I'm doing this outdoors in England. It's a windy day. It's not moving. I 
a lot of people say they can't get foliage like this, they can't find it, and that is because people aren't asking for it. It's a bit of a chicken and an egg situation. If you ask growers to grow this sort of thing, they will grow it. And they'll grow it delightedly because it's very easy to grow. It needs far less attention than a herbaceous border. With all of this, I'm not worrying about gaps at this point. Gaps can always be filled in. I'm going to move this one branch over to this side because it's such a beautiful shape. And I can see those viburnum blossoms. Another great thing I would ask every grower to consider, and I'm sure there are equivalents all over the world, these are cardoons, ornamental artichokes. They give these incredible leaves in the spring and summer, and in the winter and autumn, you've got the extraordinary architectural artichoke part. I think they can transform arrangements. All of these I have cut and had in water overnight, so they're already very well hydrated. And as I say, this is really the prunings of the shrub. So, brilliant to grow shrubs like this. I'm not going to give a list of different types because all over the world there are different shrubs which grow beautifully and perform and are good to cut. The next thing I'm going to have is some cow parsley. Cow parsley, St. Anne's, Queen Anne's lace, grows very abundantly on the roadsides of England at this time of year. Foraged but it's a very prolific thing, so I don't really think anyone would mind you foraging. Uh, cut the stems, bring them home, and put them in a little tiny bit of boiling water is my advice for this. I mean, I think, again, to quote Constance Spry, consider every flower, every bit of foliage as a potential. It doesn't always have to be about florist flowers and the growth of florist flowers is huge, I know, but we really, really don't want to forget these gorgeous things that, that we can use as well. And it gives it such a sense of a place and a time. I mean, this could only be England in May. And I love that feeling. I've got a bit of a gap here, and I'm just going to get one more piece of viburnum. And that's the joy of arranging without worrying about gaps. You can fill them in afterwards. And if this, if this were too uh, wild and garden-like for someone's taste, it could so easily have roses, it could so easily have a few lilies, but the sense of time and place that's given by this foliage and this sort of flower, to me, is what sets us and stitches us back into nature and makes us what we are supposed to be, which is florists who are based in the garden and nature. That's where our inspiration comes from. I'm completely done with nothing that doesn't biodegrade. So that's always a joy. Uh, obviously you could do this, totally could do it with chicken wire, completely possible. But I just love that it's done with twigs and that the more I put in, the more the twigs twist together. And that's it. The easy way to do large arrangements, use large things. And if you want to add flowers, add them at the bottom. In a garden, we have big trees with flowers growing beneath those trees. That's exactly what you can do with these sorts of arrangements. So I hope that was helpful.